Okay, so here we're given two points, P and Q. We're being asked to find the vector that runs from P to Q. That's this notation here. And we're asked to find the length of that vector. Okay, so to get a handle on things, let's start by graphing. Just see what we can figure out just by looking at it. Um, so uh, P is the point minus 1, 6. So let's say right here, minus 1 in X, 6 in Y. And Q is the point 4, 3. So over by 4, up 3. And so this is Q, and this over here we said was P. So minus 1, 6 and, the, and 4, 3. Okay, so the vector that runs between them, we just graph it. Starts at P, ends at Q. There's our vector. And now, uh, the what the important part of this vector is is how much does it move up and down, and how much does it move over? And that will tell us everything. So let's start by looking at the x component. We start at negative one, and we go all the way to four. So we moved over by five. One way to think of this is what's the difference? between 4 and minus 1. The difference is 4 minus minus 1. This is equal to 5. That's how much they're different by. They're different by 5. Okay, and then what about 6 and 2? Uh, sorry, 6 and 3, right? We start at 6, we go down to 3, so we moved down by 3. We started at 6 and now we're at 3, so we had to move we lost three as a way to think of this. And another way to think of this is what's the difference between the ending point, three, and the starting point, six? Well, we had to go down by three to get to that starting point, uh, to get to the ending point. So we found our new vector. Our vector is the vector. So the answer to one is PQ its x component, as we can see, is 5, and its y component is minus 3. Okay, so that's our vector, pq, is the vector 5 minus 3. And um, what about the length of pq? Well, this is just Pythagorean theorem. So remember, the length is just the length of this hypotenuse here. So I'll write it in like this. Right, the length, it's the length of this arrow, which is the hypotenuse of this right triangle. So by the Pythagorean theorem, we get that this length is the square root of 5 squared plus minus 3 squared which is 25 plus 9, which gives us the square root of 34. So the length of PQ is the square root of 34. And we've answered both their questions. So uh, let's say something a little bit more general here. So looking at this, this kind of tells us how do we find the the vector. So um, the vector PQ, what did we do to actually get this component 5? What did we do to actually get this component 3? Well if you write P as equal to like the P1, P2, so this is our point P1, P2, and Q is equal to Q1, Q2, so in our example, P1 was minus 1, and P2 was 6, and Q1 was 4, and Q2 was 3. But then the vector PQ, what did we do? We did Q1 minus P1. That was the x component, right? It was 4 minus minus 1. And then uh, what was the y component? It was Q2 minus P2. And so this is a little formula. I, I don't recommend memorizing it, but um, if, you're, if you need to find the vector that lies between two points, and conceptually this is very difficult for you, then here's a little formula that you can use. 
but really just look at the picture and and then it's clear what was the how did we get uh, this component 5 well we had to move over by 5 we looked at the difference between 4 and minus 1 that difference is kind of this this how much we have to move over by and same thing with how much did we have to move down by we had to move down by 3 so that we get a minus 3 there um, okay, so I, I highly recommend just kind of understanding the picture and, and being able to figure this out and not using this formula, but if you really need it, there you go. You have the formula for uh, the vector between two points. Okay, see you in the next video.